Um, uh, this is something that I actually forgot. I don't think you mentioned it before. For example, for you to work for Dharma, or for you to have Dharma in your life, as you have contact with Dharma, you must be married. But to do that, uh, you're saying that you have to do supporting Dharma practices that supports this work for Dharma, supports to be like married so that it will work. Can you? In order to be a top-notch swimmer, you need to swim a lot. You need to practice your strokes. You need to practice your dive. You need to practice your different types of techniques. You need to have a good trainer. You need basically in the water. That's your that's your practice to become a good swimmer. Besides that, out of the water, do you do supplementary practices to become a good swimmer in the water? What? Go to gym, train up, eat healthy food, sleep right, timing, no alcohol, no smoking, no distracting friends, discipline, handling disappointment, handling people who don't believe in what you're doing, disappointment, you got to handle all of that to become a good swimmer, right? Are those supplementary or direct practices? Correct. It's like that. So if you're doing Dharma practice, in order to come to the Dharma talk, you have to merit. In order to stay awake, in order to listen, and in order to go inside and change your mind, not just be in a Dharma talk, you need to do supplementary practices. What are the supplementary practices to understand Dharma talk, to apply it? Prostrations, mandala offerings, Vajrasattva, your sadhanas daily, and every single day to control your anger and to forgive people, the eight verses of thought transformation. Those are supplementary. Those are practices that will help you so that when you do those practices, when you come to Dharma talk, you understand, you realize. When you realize, your mind change. When your mind change, you reach another level. So those are supplementary. Why do you need supplementary change? Um, why do you need supplementary practices to change? Because change equates goodness. Change equates good results. Good results is on the basis of collection of merits combined with knowledge. Okay, let's say that I give you good seeds. If you don't know how to plant them and cultivate them, they won't grow. So you need knowledge, not just having the good seeds. So just having a good guru and having a good situation, good center, you don't have anyone to teach you, also difficult. Okay, you have the plot of land, you don't have seeds. You don't have seeds. So you go to Dharma talk, you don't have merits. It cannot grow. So what happens is when you do supplementary practice, the daily you do your sadhanas. You do your sadhanas, which is your Lama Tsongkhapa Guru Yoga, or Tara, you do those practices, or Kala Chakra, whatever your supplementary practices. That, holding your vows, your refuge vows, or your tantric vows, or your bodhisattva vows. Janju Senbeki, Domba, Ngagi Domba, Ngadom. You hold on to those. Those will make you not lazy. If you're lazy, and you're afraid you will give up your practice, then you need to collect merit. If you have merit, you won't give up your practice. Why? Giving up your practice creates negative, unhappy circumstances for you. Negative result. Not giving up is positive. So it depends on merit. So supplementary practices is very, very important. Doing prostrations, minimum. Doing mandala offerings, doing vajrasattva offerings, doing your commitments daily, well, developing and thinking and contemplating on your practice as well. Not simply reciting them. Very important. On top of that, supplementary practices, coming to Setra Puja, very powerful for clearing obstacles. Once a week, we have Setra Puja here. Very powerful. If you're lazy, you want to sleep at home, you can sleep when you're dead. Sleep when you're dead. Setra Puja, very powerful. Then doing Mixama. The center is doing 10 million Mixama. What do you think the center is doing Mixama for? So the walls don't get depressed? So the lights don't get sad? So the pillars don't scream at the throne? So the floor, the marble floor gets realization? So that Tsongkhapa becomes a Buddha? Why do you think you're doing 10 million maximas? Those who are lazy to come, you'll be lazy in other aspects of your life. Why? Why? Laziness is pervasive. You'll find excuses. So if you don't come to Mixama ever, you don't finish Mixama ever, it's a sign of laziness. And if you're lazy in Mixama, you'll be lazy in your other practices. Then we have the Dharma stores. How many times have I encouraged people to work there? You don't need to work there. I already have people working there. But if you work there, I'm giving you a chance to collect merit. There are different departments to talk to people, to generate your mind 
to teach Dharma to others, to force yourself to learn, to force yourself to speak, to force yourself to remember the Dharma. That's why I ask people to volunteer in the outlets. Those of you who have listened to my suggestion, you have treated me as a real Rinpoche, as a real guru, as a real teacher. Those of you who ignore my advice from your mouth, Rinpoche, from your heart, not Rinpoche. Simple. Those of you who are artistically inclined, we have Saraswati department. Painting, they do traditional painting. Go there, help, roll mantras, anything you can. For those who are not artistic inclined, you like writing, go to K&P department. We have many departments open for many people who want to do many Dharma work. Some of you say, oh, I can't do um, meditation practice. I like physical work. Go physical work. Go work in the outlets. Go help in Saraswati. Right. Come to the center. Clean up. Do mitsema. Do set up. There's a lot of things to be written, retyped, rewritten, proofread. There's a lot of work. Do it well. Do it well. Don't just come and say, I'm a Buddhist practitioner. You contribute nothing. If you contribute nothing, you're like all the other people out there who contribute nothing. You're a part of it. Don't just say, well, I donated something. I gave some money. I don't have to contribute. Money isn't everything. Money don't have hands and a brain. We need people to do the work. If you donate it, thank you very much. Help more. Donate more. I'm greedy. Why am I greedy? Because we need to help so many people. It doesn't go into my pocket. I don't even see the money you donate. And... Those are subsidiary practices, side profit practices, mandala offerings, your sadhanas, reading Dharma books. Then when you attend Dharma teachings, it will penetrate. Why? You have the merit to penetrate. People who listen to Dharma teaching cannot understand. The pith of what we're doing is the Dharma talk. The pith. Not everything else. Everything else is designed for you to listen to the Dharma talk and it goes in. Why? You're getting knowledge. And when you transform your mind, you are practicing Dharma. When you have transformed your mind, you are practicing Dharma. Not chanting. Those are subsidiary practices. Supplementary practices are very positive. Go and paint in Saraswati. Go take shifts regularly in the Dharma stores and teach Dharma to new people coming in. Many of you are here because people taught you the Dharma in the Dharma outlets. Many of you are here. Return that favor. You think, I don't know enough. You'll never know enough if you never push yourself to know more. For those who like to help the poverty, go to KSK, Saturday night, Kichara Soup Kitchen. Saturday night, every Saturday, we're giving food to the homeless people. Join them. Join them and go give food, donate, give umbrellas to them. We've done that. Sumi has donated lots of umbrellas in the past to people on the streets. Go. Drive them. Coordinate. Deliver the food. We give food every Saturday to the homeless people. Halal. Do it. Work in the outlets. Write. Give your services. Why? Then we can spread the Dharma. We can benefit many people. Those are all supplementary practices. If you do that, you generate merit. Why do you generate merit? Because those practices benefit people. Whatever benefits people, each day they get the benefit, the merit comes back to you. Boom. When you get the merit back, whatever you do, you have a storehouse of merit to nurture your practice. And then your practice will grow. What's your practice? Your mind will transform. Those who do very little Dharma work, their mind doesn't transform. Those who do Dharma work with anger, their mind will not transform. Those who do Dharma work with narrow mind, their mind will not transform. Why? That's not Dharma work. You're just doing a job. Some more, if you're being paid for the Dharma, it's more important that you generate a good mind, a happy face, a smiling face, and double the effort of other people because you're being paid to do the Dharma. You're being paid. If you're being paid to do the Dharma, you need to be double volunteers. Double, not complain. Not bitch, not say negative things and nasty things. You need to be double volunteers. Why? Volunteers are from the kindness of their heart. You are being paid. So if people ask you things, you shouldn't get angry. You should improve. You should push yourself. You should do your work well because you're being paid to do the Dharma. You're taking Sangha money. Then some people say, oh, I don't think I want to take Sangha money. I run away. No, you can't do your job well. So you're using that as an excuse. I don't believe. I don't believe at all. Those are supplementary practices. Even people who don't receive a pay and they stay here from foreign countries and they pay their own rent, they pay their own food, they pay their own ticket, they pay their own transport, they keep going visas out and in, out, in, out. That's supplementary practices to help. Our group is an international group. We have people from all countries here because we will reach out to many. I'm very different than other lamas. My style is very different. Why? I want to appeal to people who normally would never think about spiritual practice. 
I want to touch people who normally would not ever think about spiritual practice. Am I here to convert you to Buddhism? No, I'm here to help you get in touch with your spiritual side. If you find Buddhism good, I help you. If you don't find good, I help you anyway. Why? It's not about if you convert to Buddhism. It's about you reaching your spiritual side. What's your spiritual side? Kindness, forgiveness, love, letting go of anger, transforming the mind. That's what I help you get in touch with. I'm not excellent, but I'm all right. And if you surrender, you will be successful. If you resist or cheat or skimp and skip out or quit, you lose. Why do you lose? Everybody lose respect for you. And you lose respect for yourself. And you'll just be eating and sleeping and getting free money and driving around, getting entertained, entertaining yourself for a few years, and then you become a bitter old person. That's in the, in the works for you. Simple. You create your future, you create your past. You're in a wonderful opportunity now. How do you respect, how do you get others to respect, how do you get others to respect you? You respect yourself. How do you respect yourself? You push yourself. How do you push yourself? By telling yourself that I have effort and I can do it because I put effort in other things that didn't bring results. Always being a failure is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It really is. Everything is effort. Quitting is a lot of work. Why? You lose respect for yourself. You know what you did. You quit, you're a loser. If you're a loser, you don't respect yourself. If you don't respect yourself, you go deeper. If you go deeper, it's hard to climb out. It's not about getting money and getting food and people to help you. It's about self-respect. It's about how you feel about yourself and how people look at you. It's not about food and money. It's not about you can pay your rent or you know, people give you money. It's not about that. It's about you. It's about how you feel. It's about how people feel about you. And it's about how it gets bigger and stronger and, and more intense as the years go by. That's right. Self-respect is Buddhism. And you can earn self-respect by pushing yourself. If you push yourself, the feeling you get when you achieve can never be replaced. Never. And no one can ever take it away from you. No one. So if you control yourself from complaining about people, you gain self-respect. If you stay awake doing Dharma teaching, you gain self-respect. Because why? It's all effort. Everything is about effort. Everything is effort.